Welcome to the Cal Park Bros Podcast. I am your host, Terrence, and with me is my co-host, Jason, calling in from the Bat Cave in Indianapolis. Jason, how are you, my good man? I'm doing very well, sir. It seems like it's been such a long time since we did episode nine, so I'm pretty excited to get to do this again. I know we had our meeting yesterday, but I don't know. Something hits a little different when it comes to actually recording the episode. So not to mention we're on episode 10 now, so double digits. That's pretty cool. Uh, but I had a good week, man. I uh, spent Father's Day in Chicago, seeing my dad up there. Hadn't seen him in a while in person because of COVID, unfortunately. So just that alone was fantastic. So let alone all the stuff we did up there. So pretty cool. But I'm ready to kick off episode 10, man. Like I said, double digits, bro. We, we made it. We can celebrate. But um, we are ready to bring some more opinions and hot takes and information and make people mad like I've done the last two weeks, apparently. So here we go. You are a model of consistency in that regard, Jason. You know how to piss people off. All right. Thank you again for listening. This is episode 10. For the uninitiated, Cal Park Bros is a weekly podcast for fans of culture, sports, and entertainment. As mentioned before, we are your hosts, Terrence and Jason. And every single week, we bring to you an episode where we'll discuss the current events of the day and the athletes we love. And the ones we loathe. No matter the topic, you can expect a brutally honest yet fun exchange of snark while learning through the lens of our 30 years of friendship that originated in Calumet Park, Illinois. For more Cal Park Bros content, connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, under the handle Cal Park Bros for behind the scenes of the Cal Park Bros show and to engage with us every single day. But also, our podcast is available, is available to listen to for free and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Like us, love us, share us, follow us. And if you like us, why wouldn't you? Exactly, sir. Exactly. Best line in podcast history. Yes, sir. All right, Jason, um, Father's Day weekend was great for a lot of people. I, I definitely saw a lot of folks, you know, reconnecting probably for the first Father's Day in a while uh, due to COVID. Uh, so that was great to see, really. Um, you know, so shout out to the to the dads um, that were able to be celebrated. We appreciate you. Um, this first segment, we're going to talk about some pretty big news, which is Juneteenth now being uh, effectively enacted as a federal holiday. Um, uh, the president, uh, Joseph Biden, actually signed that, I believe, last week, um, right after um, Congress had officially voted uh, voted it into law. Uh, from the looks of it, only 14 senators, or I'm sorry, 14 Congress uh, Congress representatives um, actually voted against the, the act. Um, so it seems like there was a lot of support for the bill uh, to be effectively to be added as our, our latest and greatest federal holiday. So Jason, what are your thoughts on this uh, now that now Juneteenth is uh, legitimate, not just in Texas, but in the land as a whole for uh, federal employees? Uh, straight to the point, I think it's 100% disingenuous. Um, Harken back to our conversation we had a couple of weeks ago, a couple episodes ago, uh, when it comes to the pride merchandise and people, you know, thinking it's disingenuous when, you know, and I was saying that it's up to individuals to decide that for their, themselves. So for this, I, I put that title on that wholeheartedly. I don't have any inkling to the opposite. I think for me, this is 100% disingenuous. Um, it seems like a way of like placating to the black community. Like, hey, you know, we made this a federal holiday, a, a day that celebrates you and your freedom that you got, you know, so many centuries ago or whatnot. But um yeah, that's all I look at, at it is. I mean, I, I get it when it comes to doing it, not saying this is not a positive thing or a good thing in a way. Definitely understand the people who do support it and are happy about it. And not saying I'm not, not happy about it, but I feel like, okay. You don't sound happy about it. I'll start with that. You sound well, like a well, curmudgeon motherfucker. Like you, well, you said everything so far as to get off my lawn. So well, well, if, if there is I'd like to hear it because right now it doesn't sound like you're seeing any upside to it being passed as a federal holiday. Well, see, I didn't say there was no upside to it, but what I did say that this alone seems 100% disingenuous. 
And I'll see. So I'll keep, and, I, and, I'll keep, and, I, and I'll keep saying that because I, I think it's a, it's it's a bunch of crap. Okay, you did this. Now what? What else are you okay. gonna do? So when well, you, well, there's so, there's so much so more. No, no, hang on. So okay, again, no, I, I said they play, they're placating to, to, to the black cool. community and and making us a fellow holiday. It's, it's great. It's great that they're doing this. Fantastic. Now, what else are you going to do? So, for example, why not create some type of legislation that that directly goes against police brutality in certain situations that seem to go against, you know, those in, who are in the minority, blacks, or, you know, or any type of true systemic change to help, again, go against the things that have gone against us for so long, you know, that are systemic. What about that? Voting rights protection, stuff like that. You know, that's what I'm referring to. Okay, so you did this one thing. Great. Now show me what else you're going to do that matters. Because in the long run, this doesn't. It's a positive thing, but this doesn't matter, okay? If they had done those other things, but not this, would anybody be caring about the Juneteenth being a federal holiday? No, okay? It's good that they did it. That's a, We can look at that as a start. I'll say that. Now what? Get the ball rolling. Show us you really care, Joe Biden. Show us that you, you're doing this as a start of things you're doing in the, you know going forward. I know he's only been in the office for five months now. Okay, I understand that. Excuse me, I understand that. Show us what you else going to do besides this and selecting a minority for your, for your vice president. What else are you doing for the black community besides those two things? Show me. Now okay. you can go. Thanks. So what what I think I, I want to start with is first off, I, when I first heard about the uh, Juneteenth being enacted, the first thing I wanted to look into, I'm like, okay, uh, I've been notified effectively this is going to be the... 12th federal holiday and i wanted to look up and see okay what other holidays happen to be on the docket so i was thinking about what's the full list um i know for a fact that let's see here new year's day the birth date of martin luther king jr inauguration day president's day memorial day independence day labor day columbus veterans day Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, and New Year's Day. Um, inauguration Day, of course, that's for federal employees in the inauguration area. I'm getting that straight from Newsweek, so that's a pretty reputable source. Um, but yeah, typically for, for, for the average person that would observe them and have see some sort of local impact, because typically what happens is that something gets made a federal holiday, and then effectively your local entities will effectively observe it as well you know, banks, postal service, what have you. Um, I think it's good that people know the history. You know, the way it's been explained to me is that Juneteenth effectively has been a largely regional experience. And when I say regional, I mean, obviously, it is going to be the biggest deal in Texas. It is, it's literally already a state holiday in Texas. So on the local level, that's already happening. Um, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, um, in one of the towns you spent considerable time in after we graduated from high school, don't they also have a some sort of Juneteenth celebration? They do, and the town you're referring to is Alton, Illinois, which is in the southern portion of the states. Yeah, they've been doing their celebration for 30 years or so around that time frame. Yeah. So I think my biggest concern is, is that when we have a holiday like this past one, I want to learn. I want others to learn. Like I learned some shit about Juneteenth because I feel like there's almost this reflexive um, response to, oh, well, what else are you going to do for us? I mean, the, the, the spectrum of, of, activism in terms of the black experience in America is always going to be a moving target. It's like trying to make, um, it's not finite, you know, it's always going to be, okay, yes, it's great that you did this, but I'm still going to be on your ass because we still don't have what we would consider to be equality. Like just because this holiday was passed, I don't want to look at it as disingenuous. Because there, what this didn't come from nowhere. People have been, you know, you mentioned, you know, in Alden, Illinois, there was a Juneteenth experience. I don't feel any less black because I've never been to one of those. 
You know, I think my concern is one, it's an opportunity for, uh, for people to learn. But my bigger concern is we're going to get into the fucking woke Olympics where everybody's going to swear that they had the Juneteenth celebration first. That part feels rather disingenuous to me. Now, I'm not talking about a place like Alton, because guess what? You've been doing it for th almost 30 years. I've heard some of my other friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram that their hometown has had some sort of celebration for the last 30 or 40 years. I'm not talking about you or your town. I'm talking about this typical social media flexing where everybody swears that they've been down with a certain uh, culture or a certain uh, event since day one. And there's no sin in saying, hey, I didn't always know what it was about. Like, I think it's fucking stupid to try to judge people because they don't know about the history of Juneteenth. You know, you're, you're, you're literally trying, you're, you're ruining the opportunity to inform and to get someone to embrace new ideas if you're going to make them try and feel like shit because I can't believe you as a person from this background don't know this. Because we're, we're all imperfect. Um, and we all can take on new things and learn new things um, if we want to. But if you're going to talk to people and talk down to people as if you're better than them effectively because you've always been down, then it's a losing cause. Um, so... I, 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 I do have some concerns. I'm not nearly as concerned with um, Juneteenth effectively being commercialized um, as maybe I was for Pride because, well, Black people already getting them jokes in. Like, I can't wait for the Juneteenth mattress sale of 2022. So I would rather uh, joke about that and then when it comes in 2022, it's not going to hurt as much. <laughs> That's my perspective. So. First of all, I, I didn't even think about that aspect to it when it comes to. Yeah. Not, see, now I'm actually looking forward to that happening just so we can harken back to this. Episode 10 conversation when it comes to, you know, disingenuous, you know, can't take cloth merchandise for, you know, for Juneteenth and stuff like that, you know, because um, it's, it's going to happen. I'm sure June, you're going to see people, you know, the same companies probably putting out pride stuff. They're going to be the same companies putting out Juneteenth stuff. Um, you know, yeah, here's your, get your Juneteenth bottle of vodka, as you mentioned before, the pride vodka, you know, you love so much. And now and you probably get some vodka like that, I'm sure, because you love it so much. But yeah, so I'm sure that's going to happen too. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to laugh at that when it happens. But and, and another thing, you, you love bringing up the whole Olympic thing. You mentioned, always mentioned the Oppression Olympics, and then we you like talking about the Olympics coming up and that not happening. Now you talk about, you know, the Down Olympics. You know, I never heard of that one, or the Woke Olympics. That's how you put it. So uh, I, I, you know, <laughs> never heard anybody about that. But, but yeah, man, I, I mean, so getting back on point here. Okay. Yeah. So I, I just don't, what I, my concern is that it, the whole Biden, and I know it's not just on the Biden administration, but what I fear concern is, is this, this is where it's going to end the next four years, is that this is what I did for you people. I gave you Juneteenth a federal holiday. That technically doesn't really any do anything for most black people, because if you don't work for a company that's going to recognize it as this is a day you have off, you know, great. Juneteenth is a federal holiday now. So, so Jason, I guess my question is if, and I'm not trying to say that what you brought up isn't legitimate, many other people have shared that concern. What can we do as citizens to ensure that this isn't the end all be all for, uh, for the black experience under this administration? Simple answer, nothing. See, I don't like that answer. Because, because, because hey, oh, hey, hey, no, oh, hang on, no, 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 no. You, you cut off. Stop. Hold up. You cut off. Go ahead. You cut off. Uh, yeah, I have cut off power, so don't don't make me use them too much, okay? But uh, <laughs> but hey, 
So, I mean, it really is nothing. So we can say whatever you want to the administration, protest this, you know, organize this, that, or the other. Great. But if they have no interest or no ability to change anything, then there's nothing we can do. I mean, not, I'm, not, I'm not encouraging anybody to sit back and do nothing. If you want to do something, great. But at the end of the day, if the administration, be it Biden's council, Senate, House of Reps, whatever, they still have to be the ones to actually put pen to paper, do the legwork, take action, actually make the changes important to us. So, so that's my response to your answer. You may not like it, but most people don't like what I got to say. I'm sure we'll hear complaints about this too. So what? At me. Don't care. But the fact of the matter is it's up to the administration to, to perhaps listen to our voices. Great. But they still have to listen to them and actually do something about it. And this Juneteenth federal holiday, that ain't it. At least it shouldn't be it when it comes to all you're going to do in your administration to be about the people or at least this segment of people that we're talking about here. Right. Right. I just think I just Jason, I just think you're going about it as if well, as no, if ahead. the White House or Congress can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm, sometimes they definitely give off the vibe that they can't do two things at the same time. But for me, I think the 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 average citizen, if you want to advance certain um, actions from the current governing body, um, and that includes the executive branch and the legislative and the judicial is get active locally. You know, Congress voted this in, you know, and those are your elected representatives. Reach out to them and say, hey, that's great. Here's what else I, I, I want or need. I think that's a great way to start that conversation. Because I don't want people to, to just complain about the administration not doing anything, but not reaching out to their local representatives. For, for, for me, that is the way forward. If we want more or we need more, then we need to go about a way to mobilize and get that. As opposed to waiting for them to magically uh you know, put it on a silver platter or put a pretty little bow around it. So that's that's my perspective. Terrence, if I told you something, oh, well, here, put it to you this way. If I said to you the COVID-19 hate crimes act or hate crimes bill, do you know what that is? Are you making reference to the the amount of Asian American hate that we've been dealing with the last 15, 16 months? Correct. I am referring to that portion, the bill that was supposedly enacted, created by, by the Congress, signed and everything by Biden's administration that that took place back in May of this year. Yes, but it was in response to all the Asian hate crimes that took place over the last years so going back to March of 2020. Correct. So now, obviously, hate crimes happen to more than just Asians, but that in particular was enacted or created due to all the you know hate crimes that were going on to Asian people, likely due to hate of them because of the perspectives of what people think COVID is or came from. So that happened. You know, so that's something that the government did in response to attempt to help people of a certain minority group. Not this one though. So it's not like Congress and the Senate and the Biden administration can't do nothing because they just did it not too long ago. That was last month, right? We're, we're in June 2021, correct? I'm looking at my calendar here. It says June. Are we in June, Terrence? Well, yes, we are. Okay. So just last month, they did some type of change. It took probably took them a little long, you know, but granted, it, they got I there. That bill. I feel like we should really read that bill before uh, we start using right. that as like bully pulpit for saying what y'all gonna do for black people. Cause I really feel like I listen actually home through there. Listen to what I'm telling you. Okay, which is a, that's a fair point. But what I'm saying is the government can actually do things that at least seemingly will say, I'll leave it at that, at least seemingly seemingly or was enacted, you know, in response to a negative situations that were happening to a certain group, whether it be minorities or anyone else. Okay. 
So my point is, I don't want Juneteenth being a federal holiday, which in the long run means nothing. If that's all it's going to be, that's the that's the any person, whether it be federal government, local, state, whatever. Don't let stuff like this be all you do. And the fact that Juneteenth was big in Texas that blows my mind. Texas of all places, but we won't go there. But but yeah, I mean that's part my of point. This segment should be about going there and understanding why it is such a big deal in Texas. Well, and the, well the, the fact that, that this is a big deal in Texas makes me, it's very laughable to me because I put Texas when it comes to race relations on the same can as Alabama, Mississippi, and South Carolina. So, and maybe that's wrong of me to say that, but guess what? I said it, deal with it. You're from Texas, sorry for you, but it's the truth. That's how I feel. I don't this think- This has nothing to do with race relations. It's simply talking about what happened, where, and when. Well, what I'm saying is the fact that Juneteenth is big in a place like Texas, a place that doesn't really get a bit a good reputation when it comes to being friendly and kind or, or having good race relations or you know anything like that. I put them on the same plane as other states in this country. At the bottom, Mississippi, Alabama, Carolina, Texas. I put them on the same plane. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm that's what I was saying. I'm just shocked that Texas has is big for Juneteenth. I'm just shocked at that. You feel me? I mean, I hear you, but I don't. That's, know that's like that's like saying that's like saying the BET uh, awards are going to be now in you know you know Rhode Island or some some sort of crap or you know and not saying Rhode Island has some race relations problem, but they definitely wouldn't be known for a place to be having hip hop awards, you know. So I mean, but let's, um, guys, listen. Every state has a race relations problem. Let's start there. Well, well oh, that, that's very fair. But again, and you know what? And I, I, I don't want to make this comparison game because I know you want to start throwing out stuff you like already you know, did it. Yeah, racial literally. All well, because, 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 because you want, are going to start saying, "Well, I want to, I want to play the race relations Olympics game." You know, and, and that's I know. I know that was in the back of your head to say it, so don't say it wasn't. But what I'm saying is, I'm surprised that to Juneteenth is big in Texas. When you know what I'm talking about, that Texas has its you know recent hi you know history when it comes to not being very favorable to black people. Okay, so let's just be be real with that. Okay, I you know if I'm wrong, call me out, but I, I don't think I am. So, well, I'm gonna hit you with a quote um, that I pulled from uh, a, a dear friend and mentor and respected author. While I'm at it, uh, Dr. Toure Reed, uh, tenured professor from Illinois State University. Uh, regarding the uh, building up of Juneteenth, the history of the abolition of slavery wrought by the Civil War and inspired at least in part by the Emancipation Proclamation varies from region to region, Reed said. The functional equivalent of Juneteenth happened much earlier for South Carolina or Georgia, for example, than it happened in Texas. So it is quite logical and far from nefarious, love that word by the way, that Juneteenth was not a national phenomenon because it was celebrated something that was uniquely local. So that's why I'm harping on the whole, we have to understand why these things are such a big deal, <clears throat> excuse me, in certain places when they were a big deal, not to besmirch the celebrations in other places, but we kind of have to understand the history there, because if we commit to not understanding that history, then we are effectively um, are not operating in good faith. That's why I pulled that quote, because them celebrating it and when they celebrating it is a cornerstone of this discussion um, and subsequent discussions after this episode. So that's just my two cents, man. I'm not I'm not saying that to to throw shots at you. I'm saying when people talk Juneteenth, they I don't think they can talk about Juneteenth without talking about that. Again, I want to say my piece on this topic. Um, but again, not as I said before, not to say that it's not a big thing for this to be a federal holiday. But what I have been saying is that to me, comes off the disingenuous without anything else to show that you actually give a crap about 
certain segment of the population. Yes, it is good for knowledge, good for education, because not everyone was aware of what Juneteenth was. I didn't know what it was until I moved to Alton and found out at that point. I'm sure a lot of people, like you said, growing up in Chicago, uh, same area we did, probably wasn't aware of it before a certain time frame as well. So that part is fine. Yes, you're correct. All I've been saying is this shouldn't be it. Not that it's not important, not that it hasn't been around for a while, but again, disingenuous as of right now, that could always change. Show me. Pretend I'm from Missouri. Show me. And Fair I'm enough. Done. And I'm done. Fair enough. Well, again, I appreciate your perspective, Danny. And I feel like this is just the beginning of us talking about it. It's just the end of us talking about it on this episode. All right. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, perhaps this might be something to bring up on our future YouTube Bite Size Live episode. You know what? You know what? You're, you are the worst tease and yet the best tease. All right. That concludes our segment regarding the Juneteenth enactment um, re related to federal law. Uh, and coming up next, we're going to be talking about some of these vaccination mandates uh, for both uh, workplaces and universities around the states. Coming up on Cal Park Bros. <laughs>